Well, Brother Copeland has said that 2021 is the year of the local church. Amen. We're the local church, aren't we? The year of the local church. Let's say this together. He said this is the year of, say it, divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery. I'm receiving that. I don't know about you. And he told us these two words, restore and recover. Let's say it together. Restore and recover. Hallelujah. Recover what? Recovery of the healing ministry, recovery of health, and recovery of prosperity. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, God is about to restore, and he doesn't just make up for lost time. He does it extravagantly. Hallelujah. Amen. And, of course, our dear friend, Jerry Savelle, with his Chariots of Light ministry, are going to be here in just a couple of weeks in Daytona. We're going to have the, our out, outreach ministry over there. Our dear friend Jerry has said that 2021 is the year of abundant overflow. Amen. How many of you could use some overflow? How many of you could use some abundance? Amen. Glory to God. Well, Jerry has been such a dear friend to Steve and me for so many years. And uh, we met him, of course, through Brother Copeland's ministry. And he and Carolyn have just become very close. And we love them dearly. I learned what I'm about to preach to you 100% from Jerry Savelle. And the handouts I have for you, if the ushers would assist me, I've got a handout that you can use. You can put it in your Bible and take it with you as you go today. I want you to read over these 10 benefits of the favor of God. 10 benefits of the favor of God. I don't know about you, but I need God's favor in my life. I don't want to live without God's favor in my life. Favor with other people is great too, but I want favor with God. Amen. Hallelujah. So you have your Bibles and you have your notes. Shout favor. No, no, no. Every time we get there and I say shout favor, you're going to have to get a deep breath and shout it out. Say favor. favor. There you go. That's the way to do it. Number one. Are you ready, church? Benefits of the favor of God. Number one, favor produces supernatural increase and promotion. Supernatural increase and promotion. Turn with me in your Bibles, look it up, to Genesis 39, 21. Genesis 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor, say favor, favor. in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Now, Joseph was in a bad place. He'd been lied about. A woman accused him of something he did not do. And Potiphar had him thrown into prison. That was not a very healthy place. It was not a very nice place. It was not a very happy place. And Joseph found himself there. How many of you have been in situations before? It just didn't feel really good to your flesh. This scripture one of just many, by the way, says that God gave Joseph favor even in a very bad place. Can you shout favor? favor. You ready for number two? Number two, favor produces restoration of everything that the enemy has stolen from you. How many of you have had some things stolen? Yeah, stripped away. Turn with me to Exodus 3.21. Exodus 3.21. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Amen. Come on, somebody. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they left with a lot of moolah. 
wealth, riches, abundance. Come on. Whatever has been stolen from you, you know, that wealth was originally belonging to the Israeli, the Israelis. It belonged to them. The Egyptians had stolen from them and enslaved them, made them slaves. Come on, somebody. But God restored and gave them abundant overflow, and they left Egypt with that. Can you shout favor? favor. Number three. Favor produces honor in the midst of your adversaries. God just loves to show off. He just loves to show off on your behalf. Look at Exodus 11, 3. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Can you shout favor? favor? You see, when other people are jealous of you, They don't want you around. They don't want you in that job title. They don't want you having that position. They don't like it that you got blessed. God just loves to show off on your behalf. Praise the Lord. Number four, favor produces increased assets, especially in the area of real estate. I know this is going to speak to some people right now. You may be believing for a new house. You may be believing to purchase land. Or maybe you want to sell some property. God wants you to have assets. God enjoys his people having a nice, fat portfolio. Amen. Look at Deuteronomy 33, 23. Now, I'm just giving you one scripture per point, okay? There are many, many, many other scriptures. You can look it up yourself later and do a Bible study. Amen. Deuteronomy 33, 23. This is from the NIV translation. About Naphtali, he said, Naphtali is abounding with the favor of of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. Did you know that God apportioned real estate, property to the children of Israel? And really, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So he can give whatever he wants to give. If you're believing for property in whatever realm, either to buy or to sell, you need to claim that God wants me blessed in the area of real estate and property. Say favor. Favor. Amen. Glory to God. Number five. Let's look at number five. Favor produces great victories in the midst of great impossibilities. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When it doesn't look like there's a chance, there's there's not even a possibility for you to succeed in this. When it looks like, no, no, not going to happen this time. Maybe last time the devil starts talking to you. Well, he God might have come through for you last time, but it, it it's not going to happen this time. Look at Joshua 11:20. Here it is in the NIV. For it was the Lord himself who hardened their hearts, the enemy, the enemy, say the enemy. God hardened the enemy's hearts to wage war against Israel so that he might destroy them. Who? The enemy. Destroy them totally, exterminating them. Wow, I like that in the NIV exterminating them without mercy as the Lord had commanded Moses. There are story, stories upon stories in the Bible about people that faced it dire circumstances that looked like there was no way out but God. 
claim this scripture. In the midst of when it doesn't look like it's ever going to happen, say favor. Hey, hey, yeah. Here we go. Number six. Favor produces recognition even when you seem the least likely to receive it. Come on. Maybe you weren't born in the right place. Uh, maybe you were you're from the wrong side of the track. Maybe maybe uh, you didn't get a college education. Maybe you didn't even graduate high school. Hey, hey! Yeah. God specializes in giving favor to people who don't seem to deserve it. Amen. Right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at First Samuel sixteen twenty two. Now I'm setting you up here because this was. When uh, God was choosing a king. And uh, God had uh, so many possibilities to choose from. But the prophet chose the least likely among them. Look at 1 Samuel 16, 22. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David... I pray thee, stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And the scripture goes on to say that Jesse actually argued with him. No, wait a minute. I got all these other sons, and look, look what they've done. I mean, I mean, they're prominent men. David, he's the guy that's out there with the sheep. He's on the hillside. He plays this music and sings to the animals and, you know. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Shout favor. favor. Is this good? You liking this? Number seven, favor produces prominence and preferential treatment. Prominence and preferential treatment. You're going to get that contract when the other guy, you know, realistically should be given it. They're going to give it to you. Amen. Why? Because you're a child of the Most High God. Look at Esther 2.17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Hey, 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 hey. Come on now. Was she prettier than the other women? Maybe, maybe not. It didn't matter. God had ordained that she was the one who was going to deliver her people from the slaughter that was coming. So God just made her the most beautiful woman in that king's eyes. Woo, baby, 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 hubba, hubba. He liked her. And God likes you. And he's going to cause your boss to, to look at you and go, wow, there's just something special about you. There's something out of the ordinary about you. Amen. Say favor. favor. <laughs> Number eight. Favor produces petitions granted even by ungodly civil authorities. Hey, we know this firsthand. This room that uh, you are sitting in right now, uh, the church, when we first took this church, is, we're starting eight years ago now. When we first became the pastors of this church and took it over, we moved the congregation out of an old, old building downtown and moved it into this location. The building you're in, the room you're in right now, was about the whole church at that time. Part of where some of you are sitting over there, that was the super kids area. And the stage was on the opposite side of the wall and used to enter from back over here. And we could barely get like um, maybe 40 people in here, maybe, if you remember. And the ceiling was a lot lower. Well, we had to petition the city of Altamont Springs, Florida, 
to get a certificate of occupancy for a church to be legal in this spot. The realtor who uh, worked with us and we signed the contract for, he said, I'm going to sign the contract with you on condition that the city will give you the CEO. He said, but you're not going to get it. It won't happen. He said, I have never had a success with a church trying to get a certificate of occupancy with this kind of zoning. Nay, it, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot if you're willing, but it isn't going to happen. I said, you know, I believe there's 10 benefits to the favor of God. And one of them says that I could petition and God would grant my petition even with ungodly. And that doesn't mean they're, they're awful people. It just means that they're not flowing in the Holy Ghost, okay? Even with ungodly civil authorities, I, I'm believing for it. And, you know, I'd been down this road a time or two over in Daytona Beach with our church over there. So I, I kind of knew how to deal with people. And I said, I'm willing to do it. Okay. And we had to hire an architect and an engineer. And we had to add sprinkler heads. And, you know, in the most, the weirdest places that, that you would think, there but they called for it and it was expensive so we had to do it and we did it and uh, we went into a, a meeting with the planning division of the city and sat there with all of them and they were going no 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 and I said well God just gave me ideas to ask questions you know questions are good to ask and so I would just ask, I said, well, now, now what about this? And I showed them on the plans. I said, you know, there's just going to be a little stage right there, and we're going to put so many chairs out. He's, and finally the guy said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he starts calculating stuff. He said, you know what? She's right. And so he calculated, okay, we can zone you for 120 chairs. And it was smaller than it is now. We can zone you for 120 chairs. I said, that'll do. I mean, we're a brand new church over here, just starting. That'll do. And the realtor looked at me, and I just kind of winked at him. And uh, he said, okay. He said, well, all right, I'll stamp it, and uh, you can pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> now, see, here's the thing. We were still pastoring over in Daytona Beach. We still had the church over there, and we were pastoring. It was a little bitty congregation. <laughs> well, what, eight total of us? Nine. We would meet on Tuesday night and Sunday night here. And we weren't allowed to advertise because we didn't have a, an assembly certi certification. So we couldn't advertise. But the minute we picked up that certificate of occupancy... I waved it to our little congregation. I said, now here we go. We're going to advertise. We brought in our buddy, Jerry Savelle. We rented the Hilton Hotel over there. And Becky was one of our first people. So was Chuck and Judith Kenyon and maybe some others of you attended. We had a full house. And people were there to see Jerry. But then they learned there's a new Word of Faith church in town. And, you know, we're still letting people know. There's a lot of people that still don't know we're here. That's your job. You're supposed to tell them. All right, turn with me to Esther 5.8. If I have found favor in the sight of the king, she said to him, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, then let the king and Haman come to the banquet I'm hosting, which I will prepare for them, and tomorrow I will do as the king has said. And he granted her petition. Now listen to me, church. Whatever you're believing God for, write out a petition. Write it out, put your scriptures there that you're standing on and believing, and sign it and date it. 
And then when God fulfills your petition, put the date that he did it. And wave it in the devil's face. Shout favor. All righty, here we go. Number nine. Favor causes policies, rules, regulations, and laws to be changed and reversed to your advantage. That's what happened to us with the city of Altamont Springs. We walked outside of that meeting, and the realtor looked at me, and he said, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Never. Say it again. These things happen to us all the time. Look at Esther 8.5. Esther 8.5 in the NIV says, if it pleases the king, she said, and if he regards me with favor and thinks it is the right thing to do, and if he is pleased with me, let an order be written overruling the dispatches that Haman, son of Haman, whatever that word is, the Agagite, devised and wrote to destroy the Jews in all the king's provinces. And he did. And you all know the story. Haman hung from the gallows that he had built for his enemies. Say favor. And finally, number 10, benefits of the favor of God. Number 10, favor produces battles won which you won't even fight because God will fight them for you. Look at Psalm 44, 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arms save them, but it was your right hand, God, your arm, and the light of your countenance because you favored them. Shout favor. Stay standing if you would. It won't take but a yes. moment. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're standing. Everybody lift your hands. Yes. Say, I'm a, I'm a believer. And I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I, am I am winning. These are my days, are my days. of victory. victory. So I say rejoice. I say and again I say rejoice. I say rejoice. Hallelujah. That's what the word says. Philippians 4.4. 4, rejoice in the Lord when? Always, and again I say, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Father, we thank you for this this morning. We have plans, and you have plans, but we know that your plans are going to outdo our plans. So we just want to participate with what you've got going for us today in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that the word is strong. I thank you that the word you gave me in the last three days is going to help everyone in this room right now in Jesus name. Amen. I want you to again agree with me. This corona thing has to die. Now it's been used politically, but th set that aside. Many things get, you know, hurricanes get used politically. Um, all kinds of things get used. But this is a real thing. A virus. Irrespective of politics. But we're going we're gonna to continue to curse it. You have the right to rebuke it. You have the right to say in your body, you don't come into my body. And we, we say it dies on Jesus. But what if it doesn't? Well, we keep pressing in. It's got to bow to the name of Jesus. That's the truth. So all I can see is victory, God. I'm on the victory side. I am a victorious man. Oh, woman. Now, is Jesus known as being the Prince of Peace? Yes. 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 But he's also known as being the man of war. Amen. And we are in cahoots with him. Oh, yes. We're in a war. And whether you realize it or not, the thing that works against somebody winning in war is fear. I mean, what about if they shoot me first? No. You don't even give that a thought. You're there to kill the enemy. You're there to defeat the enemy. You don't go into war thinking, what if, what if, what if, what if. You've got to realize faith is bigger than fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Turn to your neighbor and say, fear is false evidence appearing real. But we're not for fear. 
fear is a horrible, crippling uh, habit, but you know, you got to learn to deal with it. Yes. Can I tell you some more ha- uh, crippling habits? Self-pity. Yes. Defeat, anxiety, despair, hopelessness. And how about this? Quitting is a, it's something you got to deal with. You think pastors don't think about quitting? Now, if we take all of your situations and problems and all, uh, all of Miss Becky's situations or Jean's or Miss Cheryl's situation, and you have to deal with them all at one time with a message that makes everybody smile, that's a problem. It'll make you want to quit. You know, it's almost like, hey, God, we'll just shoot them until God, they died, you know? I mean... You know, this is difficult. But we don't quit because we're winners. So you have to identify the author of the fear or the quitting. You have to deal with it. You have to talk to it. You have to refuse it. You have to rebuke it. And then when all of that's done, you still have to cast it over on the Lord. I'm going to help us today. No fear here. I'm going to talk about the love of God. Father, we thank you that you're going to minister in these few moments I have. The love of God in this room, in Jesus' name. High five your neighbor and tell them you're glad they're here. They need this today. You may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. Nothing separates us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. You may be seated. Nothing. Say it out loud. Nothing can separate us from His love. Now, you know, when you and I were born, we did not know much about the love of God. We were born in a home. Hopefully our parents loved us, but even if they didn't, maybe if you didn't even know your parents, maybe if you don't know why you got here or how you got here, that's irrespective of what I'm about to tell you. God's love is always present. Now, generally speaking, he has always used this model, a a husband and a wife, and they have a kid because they love each other. And then they take care of the kid and introduce the kid, as it says in Proverbs, they introduce that kid to God. Amen. They love the child. They they do things for the child. All of that goes on. And Romans 8 tells us nothing, say nothing, nothing, can separate us from the love of God. But it is true that our parents help us. And I, I wanna I wanna equate for a moment. Your love for your parents, whether you knew them or not, and how the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. Now, bear with me, okay? I, 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 both my parents uh, have, have moved on to heaven, moved their location. Miss Cheryl's father did. Miss Cheryl's mom, last year, uh, two years ago at February, on, on February the 14th. But yesterday... Both of our parents, my dad and her mom, had birthdays. Yesterday, Miss Cheryl's uh, mom is now 91, Miss Bunch. She's in heaven. My father is 110 now. All right. But I have to tell you, I'm so thankful that my father and mother taught me. This is their wedding picture, by the way. And, uh, but they taught me. Thank God. Thank God Miss Cheryl's mother and grandmother taught her that Jesus yeah. was Lord and not, and not somebody else. Right. Amen? Right. We learn the love of God through many ways. But the biggest thing is we find out who we are and who we are without until we find Jesus. And when Jesus comes into our lives, everything changes. Yes. But we're faced with the fact that we're a triune being. We're spirit, soul, and body. And our body has had the run of the land for a while. Because when you're a kid, everything is about you. I want my bottle. I want this. I want this. You know, and if you take your kid to Walmart, it's like my mother used to have and other mothers. They had a 12 mama limit. Mama, 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 mama. But when they turned and gave you that look, it was like, that's it. Don't say another word. that, don't say another word. I brought you into this world and I can take you out of this world. <laughs> How many of y'all really heard that? <laughs> How many of y'all have used that? <laughs> but praise God. 
The love of God can be shed abroad in our hearts by so many ways. And one of them is being do, doing this, honoring your mother and your father. You see, we talk about, I just need to know Jesus. I don't need to know he loves me. Well, whether you knew your mother and father or not, Ephesians tells us in chapter 6, verse 3, if you honor your mother and your father, you will live long. There you go. There you go. Proverbs tells you that. That's it. I mean, go read Word. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 3, 4, 5, down in there. It's my son, my daughter. Pay attention to this. This will make your mom and dad happy. Amen. <laughs> Help me out a little bit. So I'm today going to encourage you that part of the way that the love of God comes to you has been through your parents, but it's not obviously the only way. Your personal relationship to him brings it about. Amen? So, but I want you, I want to sow this seed into you this morning. Uh, Romans 8, 38 and 39. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing. How many of y'all were dumb and stupid one time, at least? Joseph, don't be so quick to lay your hands right. Joseph, been, uh, <laughs> we all have been. But God, Amen. He didn't quit on you. He didn't let up on you. Amen. Romans eight thirty eight says it this way in the message. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic, demonic, today or tomorrow, and High or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our Master, has embraced us. Amen. Now, I don't know how much convincing you need of that, but I'm here to tell you this morning, if you're having problems in your life, still figuring out what to do in life, and you've got these problems that you're dragging along, you need to cast them on the Lord and move forward. Amen. How many of you know, you cannot keep your hand in the cookie jar and eat the cookies at the same time. The monkey puts his hand in the cookie jar and he keeps going. And he's got so many he can't get his hand out. Do you know what many people do? When, even after they become Christians, they drag some stuff along with them. Stuff that they should let go of. You can't read chapter 2 till you turn the page of chapter 1. There you go. Yeah, but I just love chapter 1. Listen, the 10th chapter's got some big answers for you. You need to move on. High five your neighbor and say, move on, let's move on. Let's go forward. This is the year 2021. Let's don't stay stuck in 2020. Amen? Now, I've got to help you with something here. Never doubt in the dark what God's shown you in the light. God, Pastor, I'm going to tell you, God gave me a word. This is for me. Well, go do it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't have any money. What's that got to do with it? Well, he told me to do something, and I just don't know. I'm afraid. Oh, oh. Oh, I thought God cast out all that fear out of you. Well, yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean. I don't know if it'll work, and I need plan B first. I'm telling you. The night I told Miss Cheryl I loved her, there was no plan B. I was going to leave the diving board, and if there's no water in the pool, my tough luck. That's right. Tabitha, I left the diving board. I said, this is it. Because a year and a half earlier, God had told me when I first laid eyes on her that that was going to be my wife. <laughs> This South Georgia boy knew something when it's good corn, when it's good peaches, when it's good groceries. I said, that lady has a creative spirit about her that just energizes me. And she's pretty, too. Yes, she she's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Amen. You know, after 50 years, she's still beautiful. Yes. Amen. 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 Have you all seen my garden out there, the, the yes. prayer balcony? Oh, Lord. I came home from the church here yesterday. Steve and I had been down here playing and rehearsing some, and, and I got, we got home. Supper was on the table. We, in fact, he called her and said, is supper ready? She said, yeah, an hour ago I went ahead and ate. Good groceries. Amen. 
Well, I say all that to say, I made the effort when, when it was in me to the very night that she wanted to tell me, I don't know what's going on around here, but I am not interested in you. I made the choice that night. <laughs> it may be the end for me, but I'm going to have fun trying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never doubt what God's given you when it doesn't look right. And some of you are at the age you're thinking, well, my life, I'm in the sunset of your life. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> no, you're not. Well, I'm retired. No, you're not. Amen. Get that word out. In the kingdom, you don't retire. Right. You may go to another level of helping people, but you always continue to help people. Right. Or Robert... He said, no, no impossibilities here. We just, no small plans here. We have big plans. Keep them up. Gene, keep your plans up. Yes, sir. Don't, don't, don't quit now. You got, man, you got momentum. You, you got a worldwide audience to talk to. Right. Amen. Yes. That's right. Miss Brenda, you may be done with school teaching, but you're not done. No, I'm not. No. I mean it. You're not done. Tell the children, you're not done yet. Get back in that oven. Thank you. For for additional for additional tapes by uh... now let me help you say say there's nothing that can keep me from the love of God. Amen. Nothing can ever separate you from His love. Hallelujah. Miss Charity, if you would take me down to Psalm 91 right before my confession. You know the deal with believers is they think something can separate them. That's why you don't get things done. Yeah, but what if? I'm telling you, stop it. The worst word, but. The front row just said, get your butt out of the way. There are no butts. The only butt that counts is the butt God. But the rest of them, when you say butt, butt. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? Verse 10 says, no evil befalls me, neither shall any plague or no virus come nigh my dwelling. The Amplified says, no evil shall befall you or any plague or any calamity come near your tent. Amen. The Passion says it, when we live our lives within the shadow of God, most high, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? Say it out loud. All I see. All I see is victory. Now, that, that's a big leap from being. <laughs> my, oh, my wallet. I, I don't have enough in my wallet. My, my, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know. That's a big thing when the doctor is giving you a bad report. There's a big leap from that to that. But it is found in the love of God. God, you love me. Yes, you, do. you so love me. So you. Thank you. you so love me. I can face anything. Yes, I can. Whether a demonic force or angels or anything, life or death, I will not be separated from his love. Yes. And your ability to move forward right now on. depends on your assurance of this. If you lower your level of thinking about God's love to your pain, you will never win. If all your pain is the thing that you talk about and is there and it's real. But you see, your pain has to submit to the love of God. If you put your attention, God, you love me. You got great plans for me. And in the midst of this, I praise you. I, I welcome, you know, 
adversity when it comes my way, I'm ready for the fight. Why in the world did God, through Paul in the book of Ephesians, say in chapter 6, put on the armor of God? Because you're in a battle. Yeah, but I don't want to fight. Tough. Either go on to heaven or go on to hell. But while you're here, there is a battle to be won. And God is not trying to just get a few uh, folks to go along and the rest of us sit and wait. Amen? Amen. All I see is victory. Hallelujah. It requires action for you to work. Father, I thank you that I don't understand what I'm going through, but I know this. You got a plan for me, and I'm a winner, not a loser. Yes. Jesus suffered. He took it all so that you could be the winner. Amen? Amen. It's time for a change. Do this for me if you would. Stand and let's make this confession together. I thank you for coming today. I thank you that we've given you increase today. I thank you for those of you that are watching that God has a plan for you and none of his plans have defeat. And in the midst of whatever you're going through, keep worshiping God. Keep letting your voice of victory make the sound. The enemy doesn't know whether you're talking real or not. All he hears is your words. He does not, the enemy never knows your thoughts. You have to just go ahead and say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner and I'm coming, I'm coming your way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's make these thoughts. Come on. I am a believer, not a doubter. God has great plans for me and none of his plans have defeat. Say it again. None of his plans have defeat. I possess a God-given destiny. Realize that not just your plans, it's his destiny for you. Not only that, I thank you today for Holy Ghost wisdom, protection for any attacks on my family. I'm so thankful for praying together with the family today. I'm very thankful to be connected to all these believing believers. I'm also thankful for this church, my church, where I'm fed the word and encouraged to enjoy life in its fullness. I choose to live by faith, walk in love, pray and sow, so that others can know how wonderful a Savior Jesus is. Because I am a believing believer, not a doubter. So I shout, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. amen.